Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, with the MITRE Mappings data set, we're going to build a model, classification model, and we're also going to uh, be going into some other videos that I did, and we're going to uh, hypertune the parameters of a decision tree. If you guys just want to hypertune the parameters of a decision tree and find out how to do it, well, skip towards the end of the video, or feel free to watch the, this whole thing. Either way, it doesn't hurt. Okay, um, so let's get started. Okay, so let's skip ahead, since I'm already here. LE inverse transform, right? Basically, you're decoding the prediction that you label encoded. Okay? Remember, because you label and code the data frame, and then LE transform, you're decoding the prediction. Remember, those were turned into numbers. Well, splicing 200, so I was just showing. Okay. And uh, let's get started, guys. So if you guys are new, uh, as you guys know, I've got tons of stuff on my channel. And uh, this is the data set. Okay. Yeah, I'll leave a link to it on my for on my GitHub to it. Okay, guys, and also guys, let's talk about the other two videos. Mitra framework used here, you know, the data set from uh, Mitra framework. That is a cybersecurity framework. So basically, this is showing outcomes. You guys see the events? We have to drop the ID. You drop ID in most regression and classification models. But anyways, guys, the event basically is what happened and then the tactic and the technique that were used to detect it. Cybersecurity is a cat and mouse game, as you guys know. In cybersecurity, machine learning is starting to be used in it, guys. Why? Because you need to give predictions based on uh, outcomes, you, you, you're you supposed to give predictions. And also, if you guys saw my last video, um, let me give an example. The risk assessment model using the NIST framework. The last two videos were NIST framework data sets. The control mappings, just like the mappings here. Anyways, guys, uh, the risk assessment was regression to assign it a percentage for risk in 10 years. You guys see? And it had a 92, 95% R2 score. Check out that other video and check out the other classification map control mappings for the NIST framework. NIST is also used in cybersecurity, as I just told you. Basically, with Python and Django, um... You can make a cybersecurity web app and uh, you can implement machine learning, you know, to give a, a risk for regression or help it make a decision for the controls, you know, based on the prediction. Although, guys, um, uh, cybersecurity is usually written in C, just to let you guys know, also sometimes. But the Django framework, and uh, you can use JavaScript as a front end, well, you can uh, implement machine learning into your web app. Because cybersecurity is used. Darktrace, see my other video, they use machine learning in cybersecurity. And guys, just so you guys know, before we get started, check out some of my other videos. I've got videos of MLOps, with SageMaker Pipelines. I've got so many other um, topics. I've got Convolutional Neural Networks, Streamlit Web Apps with AI, ML, and uh, Natural Language Processing, Natural Language Processing Web Apps, even SageMaker Models with uh, Natural Language Processing, Azure Deployments, Google Cloud Deployments, you guys name it, I got it. There's 150 other one, uh, one other videos. So if you're here already, there's probably something else you need. Check it out, guys. I've got reinforcement learning. Check out my playlists. Okay, guys, import pandas as PD. Test train split. Read it. Look at the head, as you guys, as I know. This is going to be your target. You guys can do technique, too, but we're doing tactic here. 
the tactic that was used on the event. And we'll look at the events in a second. You guys see? Now, guys, I tried um, some, some of these that have sentences <clears throat> using the counter vectorizer and TDIF vectorizer. However, guys, it didn't uh, help um, because not all of them are complete sentences. Because the TDIF vectorizer see some of my videos for, um, you know, uh, see some of my other videos uh, where I use the TDIF vectorizer for recommendation systems and recommendation system web apps. Remember, because you fit the TDI vectorizer over sentences and a date sentences and they turn them into numbers. Well, guys, um, not all these are complete sentences, so it didn't help. And I tried that. Um, fill in A for zero and place equals true. Import some of those libraries. Label encode. Remember, guys, how I was talking about the inverse transform? You're label encoding. You're turning them into numbers. You guys see? Drop ID, as I explained to you. Okay, X equals everything but tactic. Y equals tactic. Test train split because we're going to cross validate. Cross validation is the term, you know, so how we score it. Okay, decision tree classifier. Okay, y pred equals model predict x test. Let's look at some of those numbers and then let's go back to where we le inverse transformed it. You guys see? Look at some of these tactics. And the F1 score was not too good. Remember, guys, whenever it's multi-class, you got to pass a macro parameter for scoring for F1 score. There's no point in doing a confusion matrix in a class because it wasn't. That's why we're going to hypertune the model. Okay, guys. Okay. Um, this is where the max depth is. You know, this parameter and then these. And then as you can see, I'm going to show you guys what other parameters you can use to score it and how to get your best params. Okay, guys, so grid search CV is what we use and it was scikit-learn for hypertuning the parameters. Do that right there. Scoring accuracy, you guys can change that right there. I'll show you guys in a second. Okay, get score names. You guys see? Check these right here. Obviously not R2 score because that's for regression, but you guys see? Look at all this. You guys can even use Jackard score if you wanted. Get the breast params, 82%. Did better, even though we scored with accuracy. It probably was uh, low accuracy anyways. It was probably 60% before. But guys, do you know why this didn't score too good? compared to uh, the last video, 261 rows with so many classes. Do you guys honestly think a model is, even if you try all the algorithms in the book, any of them are gonna score that high with only 261? And how many classes we got? Many, look. So obviously, it learned the best it could, detected pattern patterns the best it could. Obviously, you need a much bigger data set. If it were binary, it'd be easier to find a way for the algorithm to detect. But when there's so many classes, 261 rows, well, it's a little difficult for an alg any algorithm. Yeah, because I tried some algorithms, and guess what? They had like a 5% uh, F1 score. Now, obviously, guys, it did better with hypertuning the parameters. You see, the best parameters were right here also. Okay, guys. And guys, as you know, uh, I'm going to continue doing videos Feel free to comment, feel free to subscribe if you haven't already. 
Feel free to share my videos. Feel free to check out other videos. Leave a like if you liked it. And guys, if you've been watching this whole time, I appreciate you. And stay tuned, guys. Also, leave comments giving me more ideas for videos. Some of y'all have been doing that, and y'all have been giving me good ideas. Don't worry, I'm not giving up, guys. I'm still going to keep going. Anyways, guys, uh, stay tuned. I appreciate you. And uh, take care. Thank you. Bye.